Hey there, Tad Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies. Uh, I want to talk about the fear of visibility today. I had a conversation with a dear friend of mine, colleague, Randy Jones, uh, who does a lot of ritual, ceremony, storytelling. And we were talking about this fear of visibility, and he lifted up something I'd never considered before, is that uh, the origins of the fear of visibility for a lot of people, well, there's two places. I want, the one thing you know I was aware of is that the fear of visibility often comes from you were visible and you got punished. You know, you tried to share your gifts. You think, oh, I'm funny. So you told a joke at a family party and you got sent to your room and punished or nobody, li- you know, people were appalled and cursed you out or, or beat you or, or whatever it was. Uh, you tried to sing and they looked at you with disgust and, you know, said you can't sing. You tried to dance and people laughed at you. And it's, uh, people really carry these scars for the rest of their lives. It's very serious. And so if you were visible, and you shared your opinion uh, about something you saw and you were uh, punished for that, of course you'll be afraid of visibility. Maybe in ways that you don't even you know, consciously remember, uh, it's just there. But here's the other place that the fear of visibility can come from, is that um, you share your gifts and nothing happened at all. That's... Uh, painful in a whole other way it's hard it's really hard to say which hell is worse to be completely ignored or to be punished Uh, humans are are very social creatures we need that connection and so if you're utterly ignored which most of us were you know we we, uh, in a traditional culture so many of the traditional cultures I've heard about hinge a lot of their operations around paying attention to the gifts of the young people in the community what are their gifts? With the understanding that they come with something to give to the to the village, to the tribe, to the clan, to the community. And that it's vital that they give it. That they didn't come with those gifts for no reason. That those gifts were entrusted to them for this particular time, for this particular place, because they were going to be needed for the times to come. And so for the survival of the village, the strength of the village, it mattered a great deal that those uh, gifts were cultivated and encouraged and seen and witnessed and affirmed and so you might be growing up in one of those communities and you're oh you know three years old and you're listening to stories and you light up at a certain point in the story and the old people notice they're talking about the hunting this one lit up like that you notice how when he also likes to play with the bows a lot uh somebody else might be listening to a story and when they start describing the uh, the cape that the person's wearing, they pay a lot of attention. Oh, they know they're really like beautiful things. And they would, without you even consciously being aware of it, be steering you towards that. Um, steering you in a direction you were already trying to steer, a direction you're already, your soul was already going. And they start putting those things in front of you. And so probably from your young eyes, you wouldn't even notice it. But you would be being seen and and encouraged. Those gifts would be fostered at such a deep, consistent level that I don't think it would ever occur to you to not share them. Uh, Or you would never be afraid of being seen as having that kind of gift or seen for having that perspective. Because in that kind of village, you'd be relied upon for it. Maybe the elders would know, so this one has a very contrarian point of view. This one's always seeing the exceptions to things. That's very important sometimes, you know, so we don't get in a gridlock. Uh, we should really help them with that. This one has a kind of trickster energy. They kind of, they're all, yeah, they're always trying to upset the apple cart of tradition, and and uh, you know th- they say the the thing that nobody else is saying, and that's oof, that's important, even though we don't like it sometimes. So that could be fostered. So then you wouldn't have the fear of sharing it. But if your gifts are never seen, I remember my mom. She got a dog one time lives out in the country and I went out to her uh, place her acreage and the dog it just skirted away from me went down tried to just turn into the floor and went under the, the couch I said man who beat that dog to my mom because she you know bought it from somebody she said oh I don't think it was that they beat it I think it was the other thing you know they they, uh, they never touched it it was the opposite Whew. so these things leave their marks on, on animals. They leave their marks on us. So if you are scared of visibility, it may be that. It's just a cultural thing, you know, that you were never seen in that way.
And so now you're scared of being seen because it's so new. Um, it's, a, it's a great unknown to you in one way and deeply known in, uh, in being an effective in another way. So there you go. That's my thought for the day. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching any of these videos at all. Hopefully they're useful for you. Um, thank you to everyone who subscribed to these videos. I'm grateful everyone who shares them because clearly some of you do. And uh, you can check out marketingforhippies.com. There's a lot of free stuff there if you'd like to see more.